Fellas, how's it going? Now we live in the building. SNES Radio on the Ground Radio Show with DJ V, AF Feisty Slick 305. We have our special guests in the building. Special, special. What's good? What's going on? Go to the mic right there, man. You know, it yeah. sways back and forth. Yeah, so we, gotta, we gotta make sure, you know, we work. we're making it work. We're gonna make it work today. Special, special, special. Yeah, so. Introduce yourself, let everybody know who you are, you know, who's in the building right now, you feel me? Yeah, for sure. My name is DJ Illusion, you know. And I'm Ronnie VOP. <laughs> right, right, right. Y'all know what y'all sound like. You know when they be like giving an attendance in uh-huh. class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're here. Hello, we're nah, present. We're present. I just didn't want to do the norm. You know, everybody comes say, yeah, this your boy. And he says, so he got to put the he got to put the, the, the sex appeal on for the lady. Oh man, it. Ronnie. He's he's mad. You know he's really upset that he doesn't have his hat today. Anybody I know that knows Ronnie. <laughs> right, I know knows that. that he needs his hat. That, that hat, like like like, the hat is is, is is the voice. The hat is, is the that personality. Hat. Hold on, yeah. hold on, hold on. Walk rock with me. The hat is Big Daddy, the little kid. <laughs> <laughs> I said you put the glasses over here, invisible. Right. <laughs> Ronnie without his hat is like Michael without his glove. Right. Yeah, he did say that. <laughs> <laughs> he did say that. Yeah. But no, it's a pleasure to be here. I appreciate y'all having us. You know yeah, what I'm saying? No problem, man. I appreciate y'all coming through. You feel me? Um, right now, you have a, you have a, a record that's gonna be crazy in, in in the near future. Like it's already a crazy record. Just now, it's time to really push it in. You know, get the city on it because this shit is a hot record. I appreciate it. I appreciate. It. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's why I had to come to you first. You know what I'm saying? This is the like this is the first time that I actually done anything public that you know really it brought notoriety to it. Social media has pretty much been the only thing that I've been doing to like let people know what's going on. But uh, yeah, man, the the record is called The Crib, and uh, we put a lot of we put a lot of effort into this. You know what I'm saying? Over a great deal of time. So how did, how did the record come about? <sighs> the record came about. I was in. Um, we were on tour uh, with the artist that I work with named Mark Miles, and when we were in L.A., um, I got to L.A., I kind of, like, really felt inspired, and when uh, we were there, I was playing, you know, just playing some keys in, in the hotel room, just kind of, like, looking out on Avenue, you know, the palm trees and all that stuff, and I, I kind of wanted to make something that felt good, and I made this beat, and, I, and when the beat was done, it was like, I was just like, man, I know exactly what I'm going to do with this, I have to have, and I was working on Ronnie's stuff, so I was like, I have to get Ronnie on this, no matter what I do, I have to get Ronnie to sing on this record and uh, the whole concept of it right then and there I knew I wanted to make a feel good record for Miami you know right. about Miami um, so it, t- it took a little while it took a little while Ronnie Ronnie came to like four studio sessions four <laughs> studio sessions before you gave me my hook <laughs> yeah so Ronnie when you heard the song how, how did you feel about it? well when I heard the production I already knew that I definitely um, wanted to be a part of it um, it did take a while but we finally got it done, and um, I enjoyed it. You know, I, the most important thing that I enjoyed about it was the production, for sure. Um, I liked how it was uplifting, in a way, you know, whereas, you know, it being so dark. And it, it represented the Miami that I remember, you know, growing up as a child, and you had that trick daddy, um, take it to the house, and, you know, records like that. It just made you feel good. It felt, it felt classic, right? Right. Okay. It didn't take that long, either. I mean, I think... Usually when you just have that connection, you know, I feel like me and DJ Lujan have a chemistry, especially, you know, in the studio. And you, it's important to have that with the artist and an engineer or producer. And um, so it's like it came naturally, very organic. You yeah. just started saying a couple of words and that the ain't no place like the career part just came natural. He made sure he recorded it <laughs> and we stuck to it and it, it, it became what it became. But you, you kind of, that's kind of your thing anyway, though, because you, you did something, something similar to on Iceberg um, Mixtape, where like in there, like um, the crib, in there, like um, the city. Well, um, well, with Iceberg, that um, topic, it was called Ain't No Love. Oh, yeah. Ain't, um, ain't, ain't, no, ain't no Love. No love. City, and that yeah. became very successful. Um, a lot of people recognized me from that. Um, but I, I think Ain't No Love is a little bit different from the crib. Um, I think Ain't No Love, me and Iceberg were um, capturing just um, the, uh, I would say, the part of Miami that is just the reality of it, I would say. Yeah. You know, as far as, you know, what we go through and, and just capturing Miami and painting that picture, whereas, but then you have the crib that um, uplifts it and shows that at the end of the day, whereas, you know, even though we go through the differences and whatnot, there's like still no place like home. Yeah, yeah. not like home. I've, yeah. I've been a lot of places, but there's no place like Miami. Likewise. <laughs> <laughs> I've been a lot of places, but there's no, man, listen, 
it's just such a, a different feel when you get back home. Like, yeah. 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 It's crazy. And even people say that, you know, um, you go certain places around the world and they ask where you're from. And if you say Miami, they get more excited than you. Right. So. Like, <laughs> I, I had to like, yo, I'm like, it ain't really that special, but to everybody else, it's like, yo, if you're not going to Miami, you haven't been to Miami, you don't know what life is about. And celebrities as well. You know, you have so many celebrities from around the world that buy property here. Um, I'm just finding out that Beyonce actually recorded uh, Dangerously in Love, the album in Miami. Yeah. So, you know, I think a lot of people come in for the vibes, and that's definitely what this record was about. For sure, yeah. for sure. I'll, t I'll tell you, like, we were, we were on the road from, from March to May, mm -hmm. and, you know, everybody was telling me about L.A., 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 L.A. I got there, and I'm like, man, I'm, I'm really not that I mean, it's nice. I, I'm just not that all that impressed. I, there's nothing like what we have here. Uh, especially the weather, you know, the, the weather, just the, the feel, uh, it's crazy, you know, it, it really is. And, and I was fortunate enough to just like really, like I said, my whole goal when I did the record, you know, I'm working on an album right now. And basically, I'm just trying to get people like independent artists like that are doing well to work with each other that haven't worked with each other already. You know, Ronnie and Berg already worked together. So that was kind of like a no brainer. There was already some type of things going on there. But I threw YD in the mix. I know YD and, and Berg hadn't done a record together yet. And I, I, I felt like those two guys, like, really, I, it, it's authenticity, I guess, is, is what I was looking for. So was it put together, like, everyone was in studio, or was it, like, different sessions? Like Unfortunately, I tried to get everybody together, but everybody's yeah. schedule is so me crazy. And, me and Bird, um... Oh, yeah, 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 you well, I, I did the hook, um, separate. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. I did the hook separately, um, because yeah. I was actually working on some of my material, um, at Illusion Studio. But I did go to Berg's session at Berg's studio yeah. and for support, of course. And, you know, we all, and Chaotic came through. We had a great time. Yeah, yeah, putting yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Putting it together. Yeah, at the mo at, at that moment, we were actually working on Berg CD. We were finishing up Damage Is Done too. Mm -hmm. I was going up there to produce some stuff with him. And we just so happened, like, hey, you know, this would be a perfect time for us to knock this record out. So he's like, let's do it. Turned it up. Ronnie came through. Um, I, I did YD session separately, you know, just a scheduling conflict because we all wanted to be there together. But uh, the whole premise I had mapped out in my head for a long time. It, it almost took six months to do the record from making the beat to getting Ronnie to do the hook. Me and him laid the hook. The hook was amazing. Then I went to YD, got YD on it, and then Berg. And, and then on top of that, I actually got, a, I tried to get him to come here, another guy named Benji uh, Bez. He's like a gar guitar player for Damian Marley. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, I brought him in. I was like, man, honestly, like, you're so talented. I just want to give you a verse. Like, he's like, well, you can't give a verse to a guitar. Oh, yeah, well, we're going to. We're going to give you a bridge. Mm -hmm. you know, we're just going to run eight bars and you just go solo. Because, I mean, who's really doing that, like, on right. hip-hop records right now, you know? Like, it's, it's something that I feel is, has been lost. And, like, a lot of Miami artists come and they bring me trap music all the time to mix. And I was like, man, I don't want to do that. I want to I wanna make something that feels good, that people can really vibe to, play at their picnic, play at the beach, top back, you know what I'm saying? And, and be more authentic, not to South Beach, but to Miami, the actual city, you know? All right, well, listen. Y'all got me excited about hearing this record again. I don't heard shit over and over. <laughs> I just want to hear it again. Hey, Slick. Slick's not here right now. All right, well, nigga that's behind the DJ booth. Nigga that's behind the DJ booth, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> that's what I, what I gotta work with. Oh, man. <laughs> Stop it. Introduce the record. Alright, this is the this is this is my new record. This is actually my first title. Ooh. Really? <laughs> really? really? My bad. It was the knobs, it wasn't me. Yeah, this this is my first record that I've ever put my name on. Um it's something I'm very proud of. Uh you know, it's it's me featuring Ronnie VOP, Iceberg, YD. It's a great record. Uh, I had a great time making this called The Crib. <laughs> What's up? Did you put my idol on, on in the mix because you knew that was my idol or it just felt right? Just, 
it, 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 it's organic. Okay, okay. <laughs> just, just, I was just, I was just checking. Key to success. Keys, uh, major key. Major, major key. key. <laughs> 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 Major key, nigga. But nah, this he'll tell you. I'm a big critic on music. When I heard the record, cause he was, he telling me about the record. I'm like, I keep seeing posts, but no download links. Yeah. I got the record. I was like, ooh, <laughs> ooh. I appreciate it. It's it's it's, it's, it's okay. So so it's, now I gotta ask everybody. Does it feel Miami? Yes. yes. Okay. That was my thing. Like, I think that's important. Let's take this car right quick. Hold on, hold on. SNDS Radio. You're live right now on the Grand Radio Show. What's going on? What is it? Where you calling from? My name is Black. Calling from Miami. Uh, calling because cause, cause my homeboy Illusion is on the air right now. <laughs> hey, what's good? He deaf, don't worry about it, bro. We on the other side of the club, don't worry about it. One of the hardest uh, tracks that I've heard in a while that got that vibe to it. And you know, I'm 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 all over it. You know, I, I love it. So uh, you know, I, I told you before, I tell you again, tell you a thousand more times, man, salute to you, salute to Ronnie VOP, YD Iceberg, everybody on the track. Great production, man. I love it. Bro, I, I greatly appreciate it. I, I appreciate the support too, man. Like, I, I see it all the time. I'm watching it all the time. And, and like, it, like, like I was telling me when, while they were playing the record, like, I, I have to shout, I have to say thank you to everybody because honestly, like, this is the first time that I've ever stepped out and put my name on something. And, and, and a lot of people have heard me talk about it, but like, just the, the unconditional love that I've gotten from all the people that I've interacted with over the years. And like, you, you I've seen you post it and I, I greatly appreciate it, man. I mean, like, it, it's so it's so humbling, bro, and it means so much. I feel so blessed to be able to have made so many friends and you know in this music stuff, and, and you know what I'm saying, and be able to be here to be able to do this stuff. You know what I mean? Like it's been it's been a great experience. Definitely, man. So I, I was just calling to show my support, man. Y'all keep doing uh, y'all keep doing great things. With that record. Hope there's some more heat coming out of uh, coming out of Forever Dreams. Yeah, I greatly appreciate it, dog. Trust. I got some. I got some ones tough. <laughs> All right, Black, thank you for calling in, homie. Why? You're silly. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. That's a great response, you feel me? That's, that's great. I want the guitar. Yeah. That guitar is sick. Yeah, oh, man. man. I want to have I, Benji was trying. He got caught in traffic. He wanted to be here right now. He's he's actually Damien Marley's guitarist. He, uh, he does a lot of work with them. He has his own band. Uh, the guy is super, super cool. He's he's got such a laid back feel, you know, real Rasta vibe. It's this it, in the studio was so much fun because I, I just said run it, like just run it. He's like, what do you want me to do? And I'm like, honestly, I don't want to put you in a box, so just play. And, and we did two takes, and, and and that solo is what we got. And I, I, I was just like, wow. That's with his, yeah. with, with with this guitar breakdown, call me crazy, but you crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Timberland What goes around comes around When he's showing out at the end of the song Yeah, okay, yeah Mashed up with Vanessa's carton um, Ordinary Day When she hits the keys real hard I See, I'm not as familiar with that record Maybe I'm See, yeah. it's But it's like, When you go to hear it And then you hear it It's like It, 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 it is mashes melt, together yeah. That blend you did with the mic, that was dope. That was super dope. Like, he did that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> I've been working all day, okay? I'm not, I'm not. You you wanted me to jump up and start dancing. <laughs> nah, look, look here, okay? It, was, it, actually, it actually scared the mess out of me because I know I get a lot of, you know, people, a lot of people. Don't even, don't mic. stop, stop. Okay. When we met at that little uh, event we were both at together, he was doing that set, goddamn boy. What what event was that? Uh, the Vivid Tour. Ah, yeah. Got gotcha. you. When we met then, I said, goddamn, I'm gonna mess with you when you get off stage. God gave us Chris Tucker and Michael in one. He, yo, I swear, that he, yo, he hit the nail on the head. Oh my he, God. He gave us in one, and you sat there, you started doing them dance moves and started, and you hit the high note. I was like, nigga. <laughs> he got you what? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you just sounded like. Nah, 
Nah, chill. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, but honestly though, you, you, have, you have an awesome voice, you feel me, like, shit. I ain't gonna lie, when I first heard it, I'm like, damn, this nigga is the same. Thanks, thanks, DJ, no, I appreciate sing. that. He can sign. I said sign, okay. I didn't say sing. Sign. I didn't say sing. I said sign. Sign. Yes, it's a difference. That's hot in this bitch, though. Hey. You got you hot now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Go, 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 go. Okay, can you tell us a little bit about what the visual is going to be like? Yeah, I, I can tell you, I, I got a, a I got a great idea. First, everybody talking about it, but nobody's yet to hear it. They, there's only a couple records right. out with Ronnie on it. If you really look out there, there's only a couple records out there with Ronnie on it. So keep a lookout. The visual, the visual is going to be crazy. I actually sat down and did a treatment with this uh, director that we have out here. His name's Roberto Mario. He's done a lot of work with like. Uh, he did recently a, a joint with Chaotic. Uh, he does like Young Simi. He's, he's done stuff with uh, Denzel Curry. Uh, a lot of local guys. Uh, recently, he just did Yo Gotti's recent videos. And one for the Migos. Oh yeah, he just recently did uh, uh, one for the Migos. He does uh, uh, a lot of Efezi stuff. So I mean, a uh, real talented director. And we kind of sat down and talked about the treatment. Um, a lot of people, when they hear the record, they think, oh, you know, especially with the graphics and stuff, they think, oh, you're gonna do it on South Beach, you know, real like that. When me and Ronnie talked about it and some of the other guys talked about it, we were like, we're going to do a visual where we're leaving South Beach. Even though it says Collins in the record, we want to go to the city and actually, uh, you know, showcase the city and what it has going on. So um, basically what we're planning on doing is the treatment kind of is like us starting out on Collins mm -hmm. and then like driving, me and Ronnie driving back to scoop up everybody. Um, we're going to drive into Overtown, you know, make sure we get those shots of historic Overtown. You know, YD let him show us his part, you know, because it starts off with him, you know, explaining, hey, everybody in the city know me. So so I let him show his part and then basically right up and um, the, the, la the the major scene that I want to do and I want everybody to be there. Everybody, to actually me, I might have to have you just, you know, DJ, like actually be the DJ in it. Um, I'm gonna do a block party at one of these, uh, one of the parks. I, I, everybody have to give me a recommendation. All I, mm -hmm. all I actually was, don't show me for like 0.3 seconds. Oh no, I, I'll get you in there. I've been, <laughs> I've been to uh, some video shoots where I'm, I'm supposed to be like, yeah. Front and center, yeah. No, it, I should be from, it's, it's like I missed it, like. It's unauthentic <laughs> when you do that, like. I don't blink, I don't blink. I'll take the three seconds, I'm good with the three. I want everybody that's like at this <laughs> yeah, block yeah, yeah. party or whatever it is, like I want it to be really showcased. Like I told, I told uh, Berg, I said, look man, I'm gonna get you like a, a live house apron. You're gonna be the grill master. You're gonna do your verse in front of the grill. Like we'll have a couple of dunks behind you. Everybody's gonna have a good time. I really, the song is about feeling good. N no negativity, it's about the city. It's about partying, it's about having a good time. So I want to make sure that, you know what I mean, that, that we showcase that, but right. not the South Beach, like not the standard old live or whatever, any of that stuff. Like I want to be in the in the city, like really in the city. No South Beach at all? No South, like I said, we're going to start out on Collins and get out of there. But, but, straight to the city. But, but we know we're not going to give too much. We're going to allow every, I mean, <laughs> even if you feel like you got the main thing, we just, you know, just a couple ideas. And Th those are good. We're going to make sure that we leave a couple surprises for <laughs> And uh, but one thing I can say, uh, we definitely gonna have to slide down after old time. We definitely gonna have to slide down to Carroll City. Uh, yeah, that's my last name. So <laughs> <laughs> I left a stain off of Carroll City. <laughs> All right. Nah, definitely, man. All right, so but we very, but I do want to say we're all very excited about the project. You know, we thank Illusion for bringing us together once again. I've worked with um, Iceberg, as most people know. I worked with YD. It's been a couple years, but it's you know good to uh, just get talented people on one record, you know, and, right. and showing that unity too, you know, and especially at a time where everybody's kind of like over here, over there in their own corner. It's always a blessing to get everyone together. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you honestly, I see all those memes. You know, what I'm saying the memes like, oh, look at Atlanta, and then look at Miami. It's like crabs in a bucket, man. So, and I hear that with everybody that comes to the studio. You know, I, I, I work with a lot of the guys in the city, and they always come to the studio. And everybody always has the same speech, like, oh, we need to get together, we need to do this. It's like if everybody's saying the same thing, the one by doing it, it don't make any sense. Right. Exactly. So why is it that like we're all saying it? You know, and it's like I feel like people need to stop focusing so much attention like on oh well he don't support me on social media well guess what maybe if you showed up to the studio and, and supported him in real life then then you would get that you know what mm -hmm. i mean like why don't you reach out to somebody like everybody's has their own studio and everybody's doing something why don't you come be a part like even even me right now like i, I feel blessed to be here to be a part of you know what you guys have going on because it's an influential <coughs> thing in the city and, and and i'm gonna make sure that i give my contributions back you know what i mean right. to show 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 uh you know 
appreciation for what you're doing for me here. And it's the same thing. I feel like people, their egos are getting in the way. Mm-hmm. And this is like, you want to talk about another city, but you're not in that city. We're here. So why don't we fix it? And see, and, and, see, but, and the majority of people that, that speaks about, oh, this city, that, they've never been to that city. So you don't know the struggles of that city. Very true, very true. If you want to make it, like, my thing is cause and effect. You feel me? If you want to make a change, you got to insert yourself into the problem and make that change. Exactly. All this shit about, oh, man, they don't fault me. How do you know? You never had a conversation with that man. Yeah, exactly. And, and it's and I, especially with DJs, I hear a lot of art. I mean, I'm in the studio. Right. I hear a lot of artists <laughs> complain, oh, this DJ, that DJ won't play my stuff. I'm like, well, do you know that DJ? Like, have you gone up to him? I mean, besides that one time in the club that you walked up to him and said, hey, play my record. And they didn't know you from like. Did you try to establish a rapport? Did you go meet them? Did you say, hey, you know, would you like a drink? Or did, did you talk to them? Did you come? Like the thing is, I feel like everybody's so quick to get to the end game. Like, oh, what can they do for me? But like, I'm here trying to make friends. Like, I want to be friends with the people I work with. Like, I work for myself. I left a career job. You know what I mean? To come work in music because I wanted the choice to work with the people I want to work with. You know what I mean? And that's what we get to do now. You know what I mean? We get to work with the people we like. So why don't you actually make some friends, like people you can call and depend on, like DJ Fly Guy. I got I to send a shout out to DJ Fly Guy because you I, say yesterday. Yeah, he was, I, I was in a studio session. I wanted to listen to the mix I heard. But DJ Fly Guy, me and I, I did this whole album and, and as soon as I finished this track and he'd been hearing about it for months, yo, come play this story. I'll play it at live. I'll do this. Like why? Because me and him have that rapport, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like you've got to build a rapport with people and, and actually become friends. Like if we're going to solve this problem, like, People gotta put their egos down. It's okay to be a fan of somebody else's music or right. appreciate it. You know what I mean? And nothing wrong with that. Nothing. There's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't make you less of a man. It doesn't make you less of an artist. It, it makes you a listener of music, which we all are. And the, the, the thing that I hate the most from artists, you ask them what they listen to. Oh man, I want to listen to myself. <laughs> so how you know what else is popping? Like, <sighs> it's it's. It's what? Like, you know what's funny is like we always talk everybody's always talking about who's like the hottest in the city and this and this and that and I think that's really irrelevant because like like you look at guys like Zoe who are doing really well in like a commercial success but when I was on tour I was on tour with a kid from Miami his name is Puya have you ever heard of yeah, him? yeah I heard of Puya yeah mm-hmm. so I'm with Puya right and I don't I really don't know too much about Puya you know what I'm saying he like, got a mad crazy fan base I hosted a event one time they broke the fucking stage yeah like, let me put wild. it to you this way this, this is what you gotta look at I went from from uh, uh, San Francisco to Salt Lake City to Denver to Omaha, Nebraska, and I will tell you every single city we went to. Why are you turn up? Omaha. Why are you turn up? That's so sick. He know he looked at me when he said it. Sold out. <laughs> when I said wrong. sold out, these kids were screaming every lyric to his song, and I'm thinking to myself like, this kid lives in Kendall, and I go to guys in Miami. Have you ever heard of Puya? No, I don't know who that is. But yet he's on national tours doing the same thing with Denzel Curry. Denzel Curry. You know what I'm saying? You know, these these kids are doing so well. And see, when I, when I first I saw a show, it was like a, a, a video. I'm thinking it's a currency show. It was a Denzel Curry show. It, it looks crazy, like right? Like he was the headline. I'm like... It came and, from Carol City, man. And it's crazy that you know, the crowd was ridiculous. They had to be over 50,000 people in the crowd. And they were all turning up. Yeah. And they all listened to every word of the song. And it's crazy, it's because we have kids out here, like guys, these these artists out here that are doing well, but then we go, oh, Miami's not doing it. But look at all this stuff. Like, there are definitely opportunities out here. We don't have, I, I would say we don't have as many outlets as some other major cities do, right. but guess what? We make do with what we have, you know what I'm saying? We help each other. Look, again, this is a major outlet. Like, this is a major outlet for the city, you know? People respect what you're doing here, but I guarantee there's not people out here showing you is. it, it, it of course not. We what gotta, you we, should. We ain't gotta talk about that, but yeah. But we all know that's what it is. Yeah. People not they not they not gonna show their love because they feel like oh, you know we're. I guess you know what they feel like they, they, they can see you and they can touch you. It, it's it you're becomes, not, not important. You yeah. Me? It, you know what? It's sad because hum like being humble sometimes can be like a, a backfire. They right. if you're not acting in Hollywood out here like a lot of people like for instance Zoe. Zoe is such a humble guy, man. Very like, humble. And a lot of people, like, think, I think, like, try to take advantage of that because, you know what I'm saying, he's such a nice guy. Like, he'll talk. It doesn't matter who you are. If you walk up to him, say hello, he'll stop and have a conversation with a you. whole conversation. whole conversation, <laughs> like, like, for, like, 30 minutes right. if he has to because 
he doesn't. He's a normal guy from Miami. Just so happens to be doing really well right now, and that's how it is. But I think a lot of people do take that that humbleness, that that being accessibility. I would say it's yeah. like you're accessible, so that you must not be popping. You know what I mean? And, and I feel like that whole it's a different thing. Like on South Beach, all these DJs are hard to get at. You know, the, the Stevie J's, the Efezies. They're sometimes they're more difficult to reach because of the way that structure is. Mm -hmm. But doesn't mean that you know one is greater than the other. DJs are DJs are DJ. Music is being broke. Listeners are listening. Like you should respect the DJ hand down across the board. But that's that's <clears> another story because this dude right here is constantly out the city. Yeah, traveling. Constantly out the city. I'll be trying. You know. I yeah. watch. I pay attention. <laughs> I pay attention. It's constantly I out the watch. city, but it's like, what does the, the 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 respect come from? You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's crazy because, like like you just said, that structure on South Beach, they're hard to get at. Yeah. But guess what? For you to get your record over there, you got to come check him. Yeah. Yeah, to be, on, like, to be honest, how I see it is this. I think South Beach is a great place. But, like, that's a place for tourists. When you cross that bridge, that's Miami. Like, that's, that's the authenticity. And the DJs that control it out here, like yourself, and, and, and many others. Let's see, I'm I'm a, I'm gonna let it be known. The same DJ that's on the beach, they like they actually have, they actually gonna call me several times. Hey man, I need your help with my record. You know they, they doing records as well. Yeah. But they know that it has to go through my pipeline first for it to be accessible. Right. That's it. Like simple. So, but, you know, it, it's not it's nothing to brag about. Nothing to talk about. Cause I fuck with them. You feel me? So yeah. Yeah, what it is, but um. Right now, the topic is, is the record, man. <laughs> the I'm sorry, I know. I get, I get, I get so passionate. I know. About it. I'm I get saying, so passionate well, about. Listen, it. I'm saying, wait, that's why. I don't. Yeah, that's why we're gonna open up the can of worms. This record right here, the crib, is to show that I, I'm going to do this one way or another. All the friends that I have, all the guys, the music I get to work on. You know, I just finished up Chaotic's album. I just finished up uh, Iceberg's album. You know, doing all the mixing and stuff on it, and like I get to interact with these guys, so it's right. nothing to like say, hey, let's do a record together. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to put together guys that have not worked together and that like maybe wouldn't run into each other in different scenes, and basically put them in places that they wouldn't. You know, Miami's a small place, but it's very diverse. Right. We have a lot of diverse scenes out here. So my goal and my goal with the crib was to make something that showcases Miami talent, and I'm going to continue to do that. I'm going to continue to do records with. The, the, the guys, I mean, everybody, anybody that I feel that is really talented and really committed to their job, I'm trying to break those barriers. And that's why I get passionate about that conversation because that was the whole purpose of the crib when I made it, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. It was the purpose of that record and it's the purpose of the project that I'm doing now. It's just to showcase dope talent in Miami. I honestly, that's why I wanted to, that's why, I, sorry. Yeah, honestly, that's why I wanted to be a part of it too because I just like the uh, the energy in it. I mean, true true enough, I've, um, you know, done certain collaborations with, um, you know, artists from home that are, you know, looked at as our top main artists. But I'm not really always interested in doing collaborations because I don't like doing the norm, really. Mm -hmm. And um, this record definitely wasn't the norm. Yeah. Uh, I liked the energy that came out of it. That's why I was so eager and yeah. uh, excited to jump on it. It was a great combo. I, it was a great combo for me. I go like, like you say, everybody went hard, everybody. God, they, you know, hit the mark. Yeah. So it's always a great combo when artists know who they are and comfortable in that skin and you're not trying to, you know, follow this trend or do this and everybody's just being themselves. I think that magic will always uh, be produced. You yeah, know. I, I'll tell you when I was when I was making the record, the one stipulation that was that I, I didn't want to put on that I ended up putting on was like I was like, please try to keep the curse into a minimum. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because you know I wanted to try to market this record the best I could in right. different, not just radio, but like television and film. I'm okay. trying to look into different outlets right now. Um, anybody got the ballers plug? I need that. I'm trying. I'm <laughs> trying hard. I know the guy I need to talk to. Uh, he needs to hear this record. I feel like that would be great. But um, yeah, it was crazy. So YD writes his verse, and when YD writes his verse, he's like, "Oh, I haven't seen a bat, the baddest chick since uh, Trina." And I was like, "You can't do that, bro. You gotta say bitch, bro. You got, you have, you have to, bro. you have to, because it's just, it's the stick. Right. It's like that's what she's known as. You can't. So I'll edit it out. I'll make a clean version. But you gotta curse there, because that's like, that's, it's not authentic if you don't. Like right. we, we done toned it down. So you know, in Miami, I mean, we're 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 the home of the first, you know, like. Two Live Crew is what got the parental advisory sticker on 
CDs. Like, right. people don't know that. Like, you know, Band in the USA, that, that record was for Broward County because they wanted to keep their music out of stores, you know? Like, constitutional freedom of speech. So let's go ahead. Curtis will slap the label on and <laughs> call it a day. You know what I mean? But I had a great time making the record. It, it took so long. Like, to be honest, it took six months. Like, I made the, the beat when I was in L.A. in March, April, in April. And, like, I didn't complete the record until what, like... Three months, like two months ago. My part didn't take long. Though. Your your part, okay. <laughs> the, the First, part, I, I was in and out. That wasn't me. He was in and out, definitely. He was definitely in and out. Ronnie, Ronnie, we we probably finished our part in like thirty minutes. It was just the, yeah, it was just the time to get him to focus uh, on that particular thing. I say fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably about fifteen minutes. Even with ID, it was like fifteen minutes doing that. They were so excited about the record. And even with Burger, it probably took us about, you know, 20 minutes to, to really, like, write the verse and stuff like that. So, like, all together, recording time and stuff, it really didn't take much. Uh, I probably remixed the record, like, a hundred times. Obviously, it being my song, like, nah, this just, the snare isn't right, the guitar, like, I, I listen to it on everything. Well, yeah. that, that's the great part about it, you know, you got a final, the final say on it, like, yeah. you know, you, you, you can put it together how you sing my favorite. And sometimes, the artists don't have the same ear as a DJ. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but... The good thing that y'all get to work together, so you know, like, okay, yeah, it's gonna sound like this. It's gonna sound good this way, but it'll sound better that way. Yeah, and that's what happened. You know, you know, you know what I'm real happy about is, uh, I don't know if you see when the record starts, it has that that guitar riff that dun dun. That that was an accident. That was a complete accident. He was tuning his guitar and like getting ready for uh, the 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 solo right. part, and he did that, and I was like, I'm gonna use this, and I, I looped it, put it at the front, and it changed the whole groove of the record. You know, simple things like that, and like the intro. If you see slick, the intro is. It is long, like because it was nothing on it because I wanted it for the DJ. Like I know what it is to be right. a DJ. Give, eight bar. I, give, give me that four. Give me eight bars. <laughs> give me the four bars. I need to make nights. this mix. You know what I'm saying? So, take it back to the 90s. Yeah, I really, I really was trying to cater to the DJ. You know what I mean? I, I really wanted people to play this record, and, and, and I put it out early. I put it out in February. It's still cold. You know, the weather isn't it, it's <laughs> ideal. <laughs> yeah, that really just happened. <laughs> That was crazy. Hey, I'd ra- I rather it be these glass <laughs> people listening. No, I'm not going to say what I was about to say. Bro, Ronnie Bill, please. Yo, right. The language just came out of his sunglasses. Hey, his glasses just makes hood. Man, why y'all just put more glass on here? His glasses just makes We could have just let it fall and just let it... Nah, you know. don't have to say it doesn't have his sunglasses. Okay. Now he feels vulnerable. I hope you know that. He, he feels completely vulnerable. It's okay. I got like five... I got like five uh, pairs of sunglasses oh, in my shit. car for real. I could go get you. Go get mine. I got all his shit. I have. I, don't even know I really like have bad luck with glasses. Like I run yeah. through glasses like crazy. Like I thank God that my lucky hat has been hanging in there because I just <laughs> I, 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 I think I buy about five black shades like every two weeks. I'm saying what? It's crazy whether it's, it's breaking or I'm lo- it's mainly yeah. losing them. Like God, I got or, so many. Or, I never or wear some, them. Or somebody takes them. Uh, I only get excited uh, when other people have them on, and then I want to wear them, and then I'm over it. That's, and so I have so many glasses. Yeah, they're my fault. I don't I don't appreciate how y'all told our audience that. I know that was all me. I rather my lens pop out than to go through it than anything else to happen. So yeah. no, that's cool. Yeah, as long as the A says don't pop up like boy. Man. Oh, man. Listen, I'm an R&B hey, hold on, though. Hold a real R and B singer. We don't get into that type of stuff, okay? Hey, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I know you. <laughs> I know you've been on the show before. Yes. You you got an interview. Yes. But whatever Slick is about to say, mind? he doesn't need to say. How did it come up? Would you mind? How oh, how did would you mind come yeah, up? Yeah, that's still a big record. And yeah. Thank you. Like, you know what? I heard the record. I think it was him. He was playing an RB session and he played the record. Really? So I said, Yo, who's that? He said, Ronnie. I, I told you I love that song. And I said, Ronnie. Ronnie. I'm like, who's the video Ronnie? was crazy too. No, and now you, you're not going to remember this, but I remember this. He was like, Ronnie, um, so and so's cousin. I'm like, Who's so and so? Briss' cousin. Yeah. Okay. Briss' cousin. <laughs> I'm not trying to take nothing from, take, keep the spotlight on you as one of them. No, 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 it's fine. So, um, that's my cousin. Whatever, so I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> we share. Right, cool. Then I thought about it, Ronnie, 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 Ronnie. Years ago, me and you were talking over Twitter. And you're like, yeah, I'm um, dress cousin. I'm coming out with my single, this is that third. We have lost contact. So then when I got the record, I heard the record, and I seen you, I'm like, that's him. That's him. Look at God. 
<laughs> it just it worked out. But I knew the record was big when I got a call from California from DJ He and DJ P Plus out of Toronto, Canada, and they were asking about you. What? Oh wow! I never knew anything about that. Yeah. And then it made to make it even crazy, I heard on one oh one oh uh how about five. Yeah. I heard a walk, hot one on With a special dub play. I was like, I'm gonna wake him out. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, wow. Like, wow. Like, he's really the first, first and youngest independent um, artist to ever be played on Hot 105. Congrats on that. That's Congrats. black history. Yeah, yeah. That's black history, goddammit. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's black history. Especially for Hot 105. I mean, they'll play new school stuff, but it's mainly like R. Kelly or, or Tank or Jaheen comes out with something new. But as far as, you know, independent, um, right. you know, upcoming artists out of South Florida. The last time it's been done was Urban Mystic. Shouts out to my brother Urban Mystic. Um, but you know, being the youngest and with no deal, you know, that's, that's different. So I'll tell you what, introduce the song. I'm gonna play the song right now. Hold on, wait, wait, before you do that, you know, so you know, you know, yeah, social media, what people do, just get your music from everything like that. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, we just- Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, well, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Ronnie underscore V-O-P. That's R-O-N-N-I-E underscore V-O-P. Uh, YouTube, Ronnie VOP. Um, Google Ronnie VOP. Everything about me coming, you can download with your mind on iTunes, Amazon. It's also on Spotify, Google Play. And make sure that you also grab The Crib with DJ Illusion featuring myself, Iceberg, NYD. Yeah, you there? Yeah, man. Yeah, so, um, yeah, for myself, you can check me out on, uh, on pretty much every social media. Everything's the same. It's DJ Illusion 954. Um, I have the link to uh, my SoundCloud, which basically has the record available for download. We've been pushing pushing the SoundCloud link. I just, you know, thought primary location. I didn't want to confuse people. Just right. put it in one place. Um, I'm probably going to be putting it on Spotify and all that stuff. The, the, the purpose, obviously, is not to sell it. It's, it's really for, you know, to make it accessible to everybody the, the most I can. It's a good um, record. I, I might... <laughs> you don't want to sell yeah. it? Why? You know, the thing is, like I said, I did this... Don't get me wrong. We have everything in place, like you know, paperwork. All it's publishing, it's registered, it's you know, uh, BDS, IRCC encoded. I did, I did everything. I went the whole nine yards um, because I wanted you know that potential to be there. Uh, but right now, I just feel like it's a song that I, I'm, I'm trying to give to people. I want, I want everybody to access it right now. You know what I mean? So I feel like maybe this isn't the the right time. Maybe down the future, I might put it out there to sell. Um, but the reason why that it would be up for sale is because I want it to be available on Spotify, Pandora, you know, these these things right. that people use. Some people don't ever download music. So, oh, I heard the new song, but I can't get it on Spotify. Okay, well, I, I need to put it through all those platforms to make sure that people can access the record a little bit more. So, okay. one, thing, one thing I can tell you, though, when you got to pay for it, you respect it more. It's true. It's very true. It's very true. It's very true. It's true. I, I don't but, disagree with that at all. But honestly, um... Honestly, I have to say, um, when you have a passion for music, I understand that. I mean, of course, because my record is out on sale. But I think that when you have a passion for music, you just want your voice to be heard sometimes. You know what I mean? Especially, you know, when, when you're trying to get the people to, you know, accept it and whatnot. And sometimes we can be blinded by that just because, and I think that's a very, um, I think that's a beautiful thing for people that really enjoy music and love it that they're so focused on grabbing to the people that the money and all that, they, they know that that comes later on down the line, but they, they they look at that as being the second thing. You know what I mean? Right, like right. you just want to make sure that you reach out to the people. I'm that type of artist, definitely. I know most artists, honestly, most people that's just getting the music, period, for the dollar. They feel like they hop on the track, whatever the trend is, and if it's going to sell, it pops, whatever, then it is what it is. But when I think when you love music like us and been doing this for so long, I've been singing since I was five years old. I know Illusion's been in music all his life as well, as well as Berg. We've been knowing Berg for doing music since New Orleans days, and YD as well. So I think that you just want to reach the people, and I think that it's something that people should appreciate, definitely, the fact that you want to do that. Definitely. Yeah, I think what I'll say about that, too, just to kind of piggyback on what he was saying, is like, this is a business, obviously, at the end of the day, and we're, we're in this to make a profit, and we're in this, you know, to, to make to feed our families and make a living, you know what I'm saying, without, you know, selling music, obviously, it, it can inhibit certain things, but as he said, like, I did this for, I did this for the people, like, I really, really, this particular record, and, and maybe the, the album I know I'm going to put on iTunes, and it's going to sell, and this is going to be a part of that, so eventually it's going to be on right. there at one point, but this particular song, I just wanted people to love and feel, so it's out there, SoundCloud, 
facebook.com forward slash DJ Illusion 954. You can download the record. You can stream the record. It's, it's available. Please check it out. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's something we put a lot of hard work into. What's up? So can right I, now, Ronnie, go ahead and introduce your record. Can I, can I say something before we play? Would you mind? Of course. Um, I do. I said it before. I'll say it again. You know, the last time I was here. Um, I just want to thank everybody that's been supporting my record. Even you know, honestly, I know some people may not know that it was my record, but honestly, just the fact that you enjoyed it as music, I really appreciate it. And I want to thank the people that have been um, requesting it for so long. You know, being on the radio for a year and a half for independent artists, R&B in Miami doesn't happen every day. And um, I want to just give some great news. Uh, my birthday was actually a week and a half ago and I was packing to go to the Bahamas to celebrate. And um, during my packing, I got a phone call um, saying that I'm um, finding out some great news that I'll actually be performing alongside Usher at Jazz in the Gardens next month. Yo. So, you know, due to Would You Mind. So Yo. I thank everybody <laughs> for uh, support. Gunshots, really? You couldn't find the claps? <laughs> <laughs> I know it couldn't be claps. I have like goosebumps. What, what that's that? so dope. Was that break the glass? Yeah, yeah. break oh. the glass, boy. It sounded like a bullet broke oh, that wow. glass. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It sounded like when everybody's like scattering like roaches at take one. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, man. I'm, I've never been in that situation. I'm just kidding. Shouts out to take one. That was yeah, actually... Yeah. Is it better? Is it better? That's, that's great. <laughs> I am Barack Obama and I approve this message. <laughs> but yeah, so I wanna <laughs> so I wanna thank everybody um that um support the record. I also wanna say um guns down, let's stop the violence. Um we definitely have something special that we're also doing that DJ Illusion is a part of, so we wanna say that while we're here too. Um I mean, we're gonna keep it sacred for the most part, but I'm gonna go ahead and say because it it's important. I know a lot of us are aware of the six year old child that lost his life um, on Saturday, King Carter, due to senseless shooting. And um, it was something that I was already working on with one of my brothers by the name of Lorenzo, who's a phenomenal artist. Mm -hmm. And um, But I felt like it was something that all the brothers needed to be a part of. So speaking of unity in Miami, I took the initiative to call a lot of my friends that are R&B singers in Miami, Urban Mystic, Pleasure P, David Lynn, T.P. Miller, Zorenzo, Jay Shen, upcoming artists like Jed, Mayo Mo, Kev Cameron, etc. I was about by the time I started, uh, shouts out to everybody that's involved. Yeah, by the time Trap Falcon, um, just so many. By the time I finally stopped calling, it was about 30 artists that I reached out to. <laughs> and we all put our schedules aside and met up at IMG, thanks to Flo Rider and Rodney and Freezy over there. We all went to IMG and we recorded the record. And we all just came in unity and in love and in brotherhood. And it was really just a beautiful thing to be in the midst. DJ Illusion was there. It's like we were all left and right. Whether we, all, some of us may have known each other, haven't seen each other in years, like Jay Shin and Pleasure P and Urban Mystic, or whether some were fans of the other, like Maya Mo was a big fan. He looked up to Pleasure P as an inspiration, you know, being one of his inspirations. And it was just a great thing. So hopefully, um, not hopefully, very soon everybody will hear that record. And it's very special. And it's something that the, uh, youth needs to hear, you know, um, I was just saying, you know, growing up we had Nas is telling us, you know, I know I can't do what I want to be. And we had R. Kelly's telling us that I believe I can fly. And in our parents' generation, we had We Are The World. And it seems like we don't have that anymore. And I, I'm just really thankful that um, the artists came together and we were able to put together such a great compilation and a message. So expect that very, very soon. Alright, so go in, in, introduce the record, man. Oh, but this song, gosh. Uh, <laughs> this song. Um, would you mind? <laughs> <laughs> Just would you mind? Just.